Hey everyone, welcome to Java Revisited. My name is Nadesh and you guys are watching the another video of this channel. And in this video or in this short crash course for Java, we'll have a look at some of the important topics for Java. Mainly, uh, we'll be focusing on some of the basic stuff related to Java, like how can you write your first Java program. And then we'll also look into the loops, if else statement, uh, functions in this single uh, video correct so this video might be long for you but uh, I can bet you that if you watch this video till the very end you will have a basic idea about what exactly uh, about the topics which I'm going to tell you or which I'm going to teach you for today cool so without any further delay let's get started so as you can see I am uh, coding on basically I'm coding on IntelliJ you can use any code editor to start coding uh, for Java but I would recommend you to you know use IntelliJ uh, the setup how how to you know uh, uh, in, uh, build this setup for IntelliJ will cover in uh, in some other video uh, also uh, you might have heard of the things like JDK and a Java virtual machine that is JVM and similar stuff like that I know that things are important but uh, uh, like I have decided that we can cover uh, a bit of these things uh, in some other video but for today's video we'll have uh, a look at some of the basic stuff so first of all I'm going to make my uh, you know new Java program here uh, you can just install intelligent that's pretty cool so um, I'll just do the next and create project from template next project name will be like uh, basics of Java cool and enter and this is how your uh, thing looks like now uh, basics need a thing that you need to understand is first of all like uh, here you can see that basics of Java whatever it's a project name uh, now in my source folder here it's the main so main is the name of the file for example everything you are seeing here you might ask me this what exactly is this package com.netish public class main what exactly is this so let's let's look at it so first of all uh, like i will not go into depth for this syntax of our java okay so uh, the thing is this is exactly the syntax for java okay so this is how your syntax in java basically looks like the thing which have been written right here code here is basically telling you that whatever the code you want to write will be present in this bracket only cool so you can't uh, like write a code something like this and then you uh, expect to be run okay you can't do it like this you have to write your code whatever you want to be printed in here okay that and that thing to be correct okay so now the first thing is yeah you know uh, this exactly so you might ask me like what exactly is package com dot it, it's not uh, you know a very big deal package is basically uh, represents a folder okay so com dot nitish basically represents that nitish is a name of the folder which lies in the com folder that's it so like uh, as you can see like i have simple i have my project basics of java it is present in the c users hp desktop it's the location whatever it is java out and in the out and in the production and in the basics of java so it, this is basically my location of uh, this project uh, and uh, then it has you know other uh, projects basically like dot idea and similarly like this uh, basically i can do something like the vcs.xml i can just you know delete this file in order to make you guys understand yeah that's good so now uh, yeah main.java and in my com folder lies the nitish and in that nitish lies my main class okay or main basically you can say the file okay so what is the name of the file it's the main or class basically what is the name of the class it's the main class now you mean need, need to understand what exactly is this public 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 means that this class which is a class class main this main class can be accessible from anywhere of the location anywhere of the world for example if i do something like here this private it will show me error it will show me error it will say let uh, like it says modify private not allowed here okay then you have to use only one thing package private you can use class pack class main or you can use public okay so public means basically that uh, you need to you can access this class which is a class class main from anywhere around the world but if i use private then you can't access that class from anywhere around the world okay what uh, what is the meaning of class class is basically you know you can say like a named group of properties like different functions are different properties so it's a named group of properties what exactly is this main main is basically the name of the file 
mean is exactly the name of file but one thing to notice is that whenever the class is public okay whenever the class is public the name of the file whatever has been written here the name of the class should be same as the name of the file okay you can't do something like this that you write something here like you know uh, Nitish you can't do like this it will show me error why it will say that class Nitish is public that's what I told you that for public for class to be public the name of the class should be same as the name of the file so instead of Nitish my main should be there why because the name uh, the name of the uh, file is main.java so see what it's showing me error that class Nitish is public should be declared in a file named Nitish.java okay now if I do something like this if I do something like main now it will not, uh, not give me error why because it's correct but if I do something like this see if I change its name uh, I'll just do something like you know rename the file rename I will say like Nitish it will again show me it, see it has automatically changed but what if I do something like this now main uh, yeah it will show me error again simple stuff class main is public should be declared in the file name main.java that you should create a basically a file which is called as main.java it's nitish.java so it should be uh, you know main.java if you have to use main here okay that's pretty much easy stuff so yeah that's it now let's let's look at uh, like what exactly public public basically i told you static um Static, I don't want you guys to, uh, you know, tell because it's it basically the concept of oops. Okay, so let's let's ignore this word static for some time. Void basically means that uh, this function. Okay, so this is exactly void means it will return nothing. I'll tell you, uh, this thing will return nothing. Okay, so when we will study about functions, we will find that functions return something. We'll use something like return zero, return sum, return uh, difference between the two numbers and different things like that. But when we use void, void basically means that, that we are returning nothing. Okay. What does this mean? Main is basically the name of the function. Okay. So your code starts with the main function that we need to understand. Uh, your code basically starts from the main function. Okay. String ARG is what is this? It's basically an array which we'll uh, cover in some, uh, you know, uh, rest of the next video pretty cool um, so let's have a look at so whatever your code is going to write will be written here okay so I'm going to write my first Java program here which is called as hello world okay so I can basically first of all remove like this okay so you might ask me what exactly is this so it's basically called as comments okay so comments basically I can do something like comments are basically uh, those uh, lines of the code which are ignored okay so for example if I do something like this uh, this is how you write code uh, comment uh, you can do something like this okay so you can write something like hello world okay so this line is not going to be executed simple stuff now what if I want to print this statement hello world how can I do this for printing this or for writing your first Java program you will do, do something like this system dot out dot print ln okay and in this print ln brackets you okay and in this print ln brackets you will use inverted commas and in this inverted commas you will write your message whatever you want to be printed on the screen for example you want to be printed something like hello world okay hello world now this will be printed on screen so here I'm going to run it simple stuff now So, you know just wait hello world has been printed similarly if I want to print something like this is Java class okay okay so I can just do something like this this is Java class which I am attending right now now okay now if I try to run this, this whatever I have written in this inverted commas will be printed. So system.out.println basically, uh, you know, uh, it's used to give the output. So it's basically, see, this is the Java class which I am attending right now. It has been printed. Now, uh, basically, this is how you take your output. Okay, output, simple. Now, uh, this is basically your first uh, Java code. Now, what if I want to take something as input? Or what if I want to, you know, print... Uh, 
print the number print the number four how can you do this you will write again system dot out dot println okay println and in this again bracket starts and write down four so now your four will be printed see this is a java class why it has been printed because it's there i have not uh, made any comment to this and in the next line this line has been executed what was in this line four was to be printed that's pretty much about it now i can do one thing and that is instead of writing again and again you know system dot out dot println is there any any way that for shortcut of writing this yes it is so you can simply write s o u t system dot out dot printer and you can reuse s o u t enter so it has basically been done so again in this right brackets you can write hello world whatever you want to be printed so this is how you take your output okay so um, you know i can in order to comment this i can use control plus slash okay so it, it has been co commented now this line won't be executed if i try to run this now see if i try to run this nothing will be printed on screen nothing will be see nothing has been printed why because this line is commented but if i uncomment it it will be printed on screen now see hello world has been printed but i don't want to take it so i'll just comment it now and let's talk about some of the things which are like data types okay so data types we'll have to look at data types so what are data types data type basically represents uh, you know the type of data that your uh, that your memory stores okay for example what if i want to store the value of 10 i can't do i can't write something like this okay i have not told you one thing and that is uh, you know your the your line of a code ends with this semicolon okay your line every line of code ed, ends with a semicolon okay like for example in your english language we end in sentence by uh, full stop similarly in the coding world we end and uh, you know a line by semicolon that's it what if i remove the semicolon it will show me error it will say semicolon expected so i have to put semicolon cool now i was talking about data type so data type basically represents the type of data you your memory stores now if what if i want to store something like this what if i want to store the value uh, what if i want to store the value of 10 in a what if i want to store the value of 10 in a you, i can write something like this a equal to 10 a equal to 10 but it is giving me error why it's saying what exactly is a i don't know it's basically saying what exactly is a i don't know so for that data types are used data types basically represent the type of data that has been stored the type of data now see this is 10 what if the number was like this 10 uh, you know 10.34 it's basically a decimal number decimal number so and if i have something like b is equal to 12.12 then it's basically wait then it's basically an integer number cool and similarly if i want to store you know a character character if i want to store suppose c if i want to store any character which is called as m in c how can i store this basically a uh, character okay basically my compiler does not know that what exactly is this a what exactly is this b what exactly is this c okay so for that data types are introduced so what exactly are data types like for representing for storing in any integer value we use the word int okay so instead of writing a equal to 10 i can write int a equal to 10 int a equal to 10 now it will not show me error for storing decimal values we can do something like this float a is equal to 10.3 okay but it will show me error it will saying we i can't resolve you see just say not a statement so for storing the you know float values in java you have to do something like this you have to use an f okay just wait um wait okay float sorry float b equal to 1.2 
and it will show me error and I have to use an F okay float B because A was already defined there okay so float B equal to 1.2 F similarly if I want to store an character then I can use C character C equal to and in single commas character is basically what a single uh, single character okay so I can use something like M simple stuff okay and if I want to store you know a long number I can use long D long number I can use something like this okay but I can't you know let let's let let me copy this control C and if I use to something like this okay and what if I do you know um, it's it's running well it's showing me now okay now if I try to copy this control C control V okay see integer number too large similarly if you know uh, it's again saying me the uh, showing me the same integer number too large so basically uh, you know a particular number uh, integer has a particular range of numbers which it can store okay so integer float character long and you know there are a lot of different things like boolean if, if i talk about you know boolean boolean basically represents you know uh, the true or false statement so boolean e equal to false i can write simple stuff so this is how you basically these are your integer and a lot of different uh, you know data types exist but let's talk about the simple stuff what if i do something like int a is equal to you know 10 so basically i want to tell you something that here a is your reference variable which is pointing to an object called 10 okay so like i have written int a is equal to 10 what is going to happen in memory what is going to happen in memory something like this your a is going to point to 10 your a is going to point to 10 a is basically in a reference variable a is basically in a reference variable reference basically means that referring to someone see it's referring to 10 and 10 is basically your object okay so object and a is stored in your stack memory okay and an object is stored in your heap memory okay similarly same stuff here uh, that is uh, you know same stuff similarly b is a reference variable pointing to an object called 1.2 c is a reference variable pointing to an object called m simple stuff now what if i want to you know i can just uh, you know uncomment uh, comment it simple and now what if i want to you know take the input okay so for taking your input i have to use a class which is called a scanner see now scanner c scanner input equal to new scanner scanner and system dot in that's it for taking an input i have to write this th thing at the very first place okay i have to write this thing first of all now uh, you might ask me what exactly is the scanner scanner is basically a class which is used to take an input and I have, I have written here input I can even write something like this in it's correct I can do something like this it's also correct but I will write something like this okay input what exactly is this system dot in system dot in basically represents that your input is going to be taken from keyboard okay now you tell me where I'm going to take my input I'm going to take my input from keyboard itself so i can i want to take an, an integer number as an input so how can i take an integer number as an input i will say int a is equal to input dot what is an input dot next int that's it and in the next line i want to print this a simple let's try to run this now you see now what will happen hello world has been printed why it has been printed because because see this line was there so now but it's not completed yet i have to give a number and input so i will give a number as say like 23 okay input enter 23 has been printed that's what we have done here we have taken the number a as an input okay and then we have print that number simple stuff what if i want to you know take the number of float b float a equal to input dot next float okay Sim simple now i can't float basically represents decimal number now i will have to use a decimal decimal number i have to give an input see 12.3 12.3 has been printed similarly what if i try to give uh, you know an integer number as an input 
I have used float, which is basically uh, representing the decimal values. But what if I give the number something like an integer, say like 12? It will print, it will print the decimal number of, you know, integer. Okay, that's pretty much. Similarly, what if I want to take a character as an input? See, character B equal to input dot next simple say input dot next i have to use dot next and see it is it is showing me error okay so it's saying a string you have to okay so instead of next i can i have to use something like this character b okay so string b is equal to you know i can do something like this what if i want to you know and uh, now i can do if you if you guys don't know what exactly string string basically is the you know uh, a chain of words so what if i if i say something like this i'm i'm learning java so i'm learning java is what a string now i, I will write something uh, i am learning java but it's showing me error why because i have used only dot next and dot next what do is dot next basically only requires the first word if i do something like this java it will again show me error it's again showing me error so instead of you know doing this string b is equal to i can do something like uh you know character uh, not character i can use string b equal to input dot next line that's it input dot next line i have to use and in the next line i'll use b to be printed now let's see but before that let me just comment this okay now let's try to run this okay i got it got it what was the mistake i got it cool so first of all i have to you know uh, give a number as an input see float i have given a number in input 12.3 12.3 has been uh, printed now it's not it has not been run why because uh, this is a condition i'll tell you about it later okay so string b equal to input dot next line i can basically use okay um, what if i do something like this character it's showing me error it say it will say that you need to uh, you know use string okay so string b equal to and in the next line i can use something like this b simple string b equal to input dot next line 12.3 C process for finish with exit code 0 it's not been printing anything okay it's not printing anything which will look uh, in the uh, later part why it's not doing it okay but for now you have uh, got an idea about how uh, you can take an input so what if I want to you know uh, wait what if I want to if what if I guys what if I tell you that you have to print uh, you know a function uh, sorry you have uh, I'll give you, uh, you know, let's try to print a number. Oh, sorry, the sum of two numbers. So how can I do this? I can just simply write right here, you know, S O U T. First of all, I will say, say, enter two, or I will say, enter first number. Then I can say, scanner class I have used, scanner class already used, and int a is equal to input. Okay, so int a, it's it's not. okay so okay so first of all i have to use a scanner class as well because i have you know uh, commented it so scanner input equal to new scanner system dot in that's pretty much and then i can use something like this int a is equal to in input dot next int simple stuff now a will be taken as input in the next line i want to print something like this enter the second number okay number it's it doesn't matter about the spelling now int b is equal to input dot next int and then at the last i can say uh, you know and then i can say uh, before that i can say int sum equal to a plus b okay and then in this i can print my sum okay simple stuff see now what will happen first of all this line will be executed then this then this then this then this then this okay enter first number say like 12 of. enter second number 12 of. sum is 24 simple stuff 
what if I want to you know uh, print the multiplication so I can do something like this uh, just refactor rename um, I can do multiply okay and multi for multiplication I have to use this okay uh, this okay so you can't use like X whatever you uh, try to use in your mathematics language later in your high school or school days okay you have to in the coding world you have to use this symbol and the first number 12 second number 12 144 12 into 12 is 144 similarly you can do something like this if you want to divide a divide by b let's try to run this and the first number 12 12 12 divided by 12 is 1 simple so this is how your you know uh, input has been, uh, input uh, basically for taking an input in java cool now let, let me uh, make another class which is called as program you know 0 to and again I have to use something like this public st static you know static remember you have to do something like static void main and then you have to write here something like string see I'm not doing something new because I have made a new file now in order to start coding I have to first of all write this okay public setting whatever I want I can write this and but instead of writing it completely I can do something like this PSVM that's it okay now we have um, mostly took about how do you can take the input in Java okay now let's let's look about uh, you know uh, the loops uh, if a statement let's talk about these things okay so uh, let's talk about first of all you know the simple stuff which is called as if if else statements if a statement basically means that for example if I give you an uh, example if my best friend goes to school I will go to school else I will not go to school simple similarly uh, how you are uh, you know the uh, if else statement your syntax syntax for if else statement okay statement so if this is how your uh, syntax for if else statement looks like if and basically I can do something like this and yeah if else this see if basically condition simple in this in this bracket I will have to write a condition for example in the example I told you if my best friend go, goes to school what was the condition my best friend goes to school if the condition is true if this condition is true my this line of code will be executed see up to this 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 line of code will be executed but what if it this condition is not true then this line of code will be executed then what else code will be executed okay so I'll give you I will try to give you an example about if else statement now so just wait a second just wait um, yeah okay so I'll try to give you an example about if else statement for example um, let's let's try to make you know uh, taking the uh, let's let's make a program something like this about the voters okay so if you are above 18 you cannot vote you cannot vote if you are below 18 no, no if you are above 18 you can vote if you are below 18 you cannot vote let's try to make a program something like this okay so if you are above 18 you can vote else you can't vote simple stuff now how can we do something like this before doing this we have to take the input from the user okay about the age so how can we do that for taking an input whatever what we need to use scanner class so scanner input equal to new scanner system dot in simple stuff then I can say int age equal to because age will be my what age will be my integer value int age equal to input dot next and now age will be taken as input now I will do something like this if age equal to equal to 18 sorry if I may age is greater than or equal to 18 greater than or equal to 18 that's it greater than or equal to 18 means that 18 or above 18 simple stuff then my this line of code will be executed then I will print you are eligible to vote okay otherwise suppose this condition is not true then I will print 
यू आर नॉट एलिजिबल टू वोट सिंपल ओके नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू रन दिस लेट्स ट्राई टू रन दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई हैव टू गिवन एजेस इनपुट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई गेव द एजेस नाइनटीन इट्स सेइंग यू आर एलिजिबल टू वोट लेट्स ट्राई टू रन दिस प्रोग्राम अगेन इफ आई गिव द एज एस नाइन्टी सिक्स यू आर एलिजिबल टू वोट इफ आई ट्राई टू गिव द एज एस सेवनटीन सॉरी नॉट थर्टी सेवन सेवनटीन इट्स सेइंग यू आर नॉट एलिजिबल टू वोट ओके सो दिस इज हाउ यूर इफ एल्स स्टेटमेंट वर्क सिंपल यूर इफ एल्स स्टेटमेंट वर्क कूल नाउ let's talk about the next condition the next thing which is called uh, i want don't want to remove this uh, you know i will just do something like this yeah and uh, let's talk about the next uh, statement which is called as you know if else statement uh, we can uh, have this while loop now okay so you can you can also do something like this okay in case you guys uh, I have, you know, I have do, done something like this. Um, okay, I have done something. Like, I can also use an else if condition here. Else if, else if age is less than equal to eighteen, age age is less than equal to ten. Do this. Else, else, print something. okay so i can do also do something like this else if what will happen is first of all this condition is going to be checked is age greater than it is suppose i i give give the age input as 20 so is a 20 greater than or equal to 18 yes it is then only this line of code will be executed see first of all the condition of if will be checked if the condition of if is true then only it will move to else and since we are seeing that what is the condition for else we are seeing that else if has been used else if basically means that another condition is 20 less than equal to n no it is not then it will move to this suppose i am telling you okay for example if i you know input the age as 9 uh, i input the age as 15 print something will be printed not print something i can do something like this i can say something like enter correct age simple now it now you see what will happen i will pre, uh, put the age as 15 now see enter correct age will be printed 15 enter correct age why what happened is i have input the age as 15 it is saying is 15 greater than or equal to 18 no then it will move to this now when it move to else it has seen that there is an another condition for if there is an another condition of if which is called as if age is less than equal to 10 you tell me is 15 less than or equal to 10 no it is not then what will happen it will move to this else condition simple okay basically this is something if else i have used if else here okay this is your first if else and then this is your next if else simple stuff okay now 15 is 15 less than equal to 10 no it is not then what will happen this else will be printed what was in this else enter correct age that's what has been printed pretty much cool so let's move to do the another thing which is called as okay i can do something like this now now let, let's talk about while loop okay so while loop basically loops are what loops are basically representing your uh, you know loops basically represent that your code will run again and again okay so while loop is basically is the syntax for while loops look something like this while and okay so while if the while basically means while this condition is true this line of code will be executed once this condition is not true the code will not no longer be executed simple stuff okay so let's try to run this uh, so if i now i have to, uh, input an age and i will input an age okay so for example if i do something like this while my age equal to equal to 18 while age equal to equal it equal to equal to basically represent e, it means equal to okay so while age equal to equal to 18 i will say uh correct age okay let's try to run this 
now you will see what if i if i uh, you know what if i try to you know uh, do uh, input the age as 19 nothing has been shown nothing why because uh, it will check this condition is age equal to equal to 18 no 19 is not equal to 18 so the next line of code will be executed what is the next line of code nothing so nothing has been executed nothing has been printed here okay so the code has been run what if i try to print the age as 18 uh, sorry this is error because i have you know used the wrong symbol 18 see infinite loop infinite loop is running why i will tell you i will tell you why what is going to happen since i told you since i told you that loops are what basically running your code again and again once this line once this code has been executed is age equal to 18 in 18 yes it is then once this code has been executed whatever has been written here has been executed it will again come to this file loop and will check is age equal to 18 yes it is then again this will be printed then again it will come back here in the while loop condition is age equal to 18 yes it is then again it will print it that's why you see infinite while loop okay so in order to you know uh, print only one uh, correct age i can do something like this while age equal to equal to 18 i can do something like this break so what will happen is let's try to run this now okay so while age equal to equal to 18 correct age break basically means that nothing has to be executed again nothing has to be executed once the break has been done break means stop stop now so instead of break if i do something like this continue continue basically means that continue even if the condition is you know satisfied continue doing that although uh, in while loop that's what basically happens so if i put the age as 18 see infinite while loop okay so break and continue i have told you simple stuff now let's look about the next thing which is called as do while loop so what exactly do while loop is done do while loop is basically you know do do while loop basically do something like this so do is basically condition okay do you have to first of all write the condition and while okay this is how your code do okay so sorry sorry not this do code and while condition so what is the difference between while loop and uh, do while loop the difference between it here semicolon has to be put okay so the uh, difference between do while loop and while loop is that in do while loop this code is going to be executed at least one time see here my condition while while age equal to 18 what if my age was 19 then this code is not going to be executed for the even for the first time why because age is not equal to 18 but for this what will happen in do while loop the code is going to be this line of code is going to be executed for the first time after that it is going to check the condition i will tell you like this see do what i want to do i want to print correct age while while my age equal to equal to 19 suppose now see what will happen see what will happen now okay so yeah i have to do use this also see let's try to input an age which is called as 18 okay it has printed correct age why because i told you first of all this line of code is going to be executed even if the condition is not satisfied it is going to be executed for the very first time at least so it has been printed correct age then it is going to check the condition is age equal to equal to 19 no it is not then it will not move to this do value what if this condition has been satisfied what if the condition was satisfied what if i had entered 19 correct age will be printed one time then it will check the condition is age equal to 19 yes it is then again it will move to this do loop okay again it will move to this do loop i'll tell you like it will be basically you know uh, infinite do while loop see correct age correct age simple 
okay so this is basically your do while loop and the next thing is basically uh, we, before before uh, moving further you have to uh, make sure something like this what if i do something like this int a is equal to 10 and i then do something like this a plus plus and then i say print a a plus plus basically means that increment the value of a by one okay so int a is equal to 10 a, after that a plus plus a plus plus basically means that increase the value of a by one what was the value of a the value of a was 10 now it will be incremented by one that is increased by one now the a value of a will be 11 so now 11 will be printed why because the updated value the latest value of a was 11 see now just wait um okay so i guess i have to you know uh, input an age as well <laughs> uh, what have a, what was happening that uh, you know int age equal to i have to input an age as well uh, i can do something like this i can yeah now let's try to do this see now 11 has been printed similarly if i do something like this a minus minus it basically means that decrement decrease the value of a by one so now the nine will be printed see now What if I want to increment this value of a by, what if I want to increase this value of a by 2? I can do something like this, a plus equal to 2. It basically means that a equal to a plus 2. Simple. This is what it means. So now 12 will be printed. What if I want to increment this value by 10? a plus equal to, a plus equal to 10. And if, even if you want to increment this value by 100,000, you can do something like this, a plus equal to 10. Similarly, for decrement, a minus equal to 10. Simple. What if I do something like this? a, you know, a minus equal to, a minus equal to 10. Simple. Zero. Okay. Because what happened? a minus equal to 10 basically means that a equal to a minus 10 what was the initial value of a so a equal to now 10 minus 10 equal to 0 that's what has been printed here 0 okay so you have understood about this now let's talk about loops uh, if uh, for loop okay so for loop for loop basically uh, i'll tell you about the first of all the syntax for for loop so for the syntax for loop do it it's something like this for and it's simple this is your code and but in this for loop in the bracket something like this you know initialization initialization is what see i have done something like this here uh, you know when i write something like this if I, I if i write something like this int i this is correct it basically means that i has been initialized then in the next line i do, do something like this i equal to 19 it basically means that the value has been stored in i the value of you know the value of of 19 has been stored in i okay simple stuff but what if i do something like this int i equal to 19 it will show me error why it will say i has already been, already been defined it is going to say that Nidesh, you have defined int i, you have defined as integer already. Why are you defining it again? Okay. I can do something like this, but int j equal to 90. It will not show me error then. Okay. Simple. So for initialization first, then semicolon, then condition to if condition is to be checked. Okay, then condition is to be checked and if the condition has been fulfilled, okay, then this line of code will be executed. Okay, then this line of code will be executed. Once the con code has been executed, then increment or, you know, increment or decrement will happen. Simple stuff. Increment or decrement will be happen. Let's try to, you know, uh, I'll tell you something like this. I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay, what if I want print n natural numbers 
Oh, okay, okay, this might get little, little complex, very little complex, but uh, I can do something like this for loop int. I want to, you know, uh, I can do something like, you know, this. Yeah, starting with a for loop, I can say for int i is equal to zero. I'm starting basically from i equal to one and I will go till i is less than equal to five and then I'll print hello world okay so now what will happen see first of all the loop will run for i equal to one okay the loop will basically run for i equal to one simple stuff it will check is one less than equal to five yes it is then hello world will be printed simple stuff hello world has been printed now now it will increment the value of i then what will be the value of i now it will be two it will check the condition is two less than or equal to five yes it is then again print this it will again in increment this is 3 less than equal to 5? Yes, it is. Print this. Again, increment 4. Is 4 less than equal to 5? Yes, it is. Print this. It will again increment this. Is 5 less than equal to 5? Yes, it is. Print this. Is again incremented. Is 6 less than equal to 5? No, it is not. Out of for loop. Simple. Come out of for loop. So your hello world will be printed 5 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Simple. See. Hello world, hello world, hello world. Simple stuff. See how many times it has been printed. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. So now, what if I, you know, uh, want to? If I, what if I do something like this? What if I give you an example? Print n natural numbers. Print n natural numbers. So I can, for I can use for loop, and I can. Uh, but for print n natural number basically means that you have to take then. Uh, a natural number as an input for example i can say int n equal to input dot next int and then uh, i will basically take a number as input for example if i do, uh, say the number as 19 then on my screen it should be printed like 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 19 should be printed okay so i will start my loop from int i is equal to 0 if i want to print 0 as well then i will go till i is less than equal to up to how many times I want to run this loop up to n times and then increment the value simple stuff you know print the value of i simple I'll tell you how, how it's working now let's try to give the example you know of 7 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 has been printed what's happening is for i equal to 0 it's set okay so I have first of all uh, give uh, I have input the n as 7 so int i is equal to 0 the value of 0 has been you know uh, the 0 has been you know uh, i is pointing to 0 cool then it's checking is 0 less than or equal to 7 because I have uh, given the input as 7 yes it is print the value of i what was the value of i 0 so 0 has been printed here then what will happen increment increment the value of i now so one will be the value of i will be one is one less than or equal to seven yes it is print the value of i what is the value of i now one again incremented two is two less than equal to seven yes it is print two similarly three is three less than equal to seven yes it is three similarly four five six seven now it, the it will again increment after seven it will again increment eight you tell me is eight less than or equal to seven no it is not come out of the for loop what was next what was the next line in the for loop what was after the for loop nothing so after the after whatever has been printed nothing was printed after it okay so this is how your for loops work work what if i uh, what if i want to uh, print n natural numbers in reverse order verse order simple how can i do something like this i can say i can st start a for loop and this for loop i will start basically from n okay and i will go till one i is greater than equal to one i will say i is greater than equal to one and instead of incremented i will say decremented simple and i can you know print the value of i now so what will what is the value of three what will the value of i will print it seven six five four three two one this will be printed uh, seven, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Simple stuff. What happened is, i equal to n. So first time for the first time, the value five was seven. Is seven greater than or equal to one? Yes, it is. Print the value five. What was the value of i? Seven. 
it has been printed simple then decrement it what is the value of 7 now 6 is 6 greater than or equal to 1 yes it is print it uh, doing the similar like this up to 1 okay it has been done, done up to 1 again decrement it now it's the value of i 0 is 0 greater than or equal to 1 no it is not come out of this for loop now simple stuff that's how your for loops works like this i have a question for you you can uh, just comment uh, this answer in the comment section the question the homework question is basically print the uh, multiplication table of n okay print the multiplication table of n that's your homework so 2 into 1 2 into 2 2 into 3 2 into 4 2 into 5 1 2 3 4 5 this is what this will happen in loop okay so this is your homework let's try to make another java class for basically the last concept which is called as functions so function is very easy function is what will happen as i mentioned earlier that uh, you know uh, we are returning something so for making a function let's make a function like this static uh, for making a function i the what is the uh, syntax for making a function i can do something like this static and then uh, you know uh, return data type return data type okay static and name of the function then and then bracket and then okay and here your code will be executed this is your code and yeah, this is how your new function looks like see simple stuff this is your function public class function is a function i can do something like this public setting word me this is your function what if i want to make a new function i want to make a new function i can do something like this in order to make a new function of my own i can do something like this static int for example if i want to make a function like sum sum function the sub fun uh, function which basically uh, you know gives the sum of two numbers so i can do something like this sum and then i can do something like this int a is equal to 10 int b is equal to 20 uh you know why i'm doing this i will say sum okay int sum equal to a plus b okay so but it will show me error it's saying you have returned see it will show me a missing return statement whenever you use something like this int float or whatever see integer it basically means that you have to return an integer at last so i will use int return zero return zero okay because i have used the word int here now what if i want to run this function what if i want to run this function how can i do this how can i do this let's try to run this now nothing has been printed why although i have created this function as mentioned earlier whatever has been the program will run whatever the code basic portion of the code will run whatever has been written in this main function your main function will execute only so for so for in order to you know execute this some function i have to you know uh, i can do something like this i have to um, put this function or use this or add this function in my main function okay so how can i add this function since this function is an integer sum is an integer so it, it's returning return an integer value okay so in order to it's since it's returning an integer value i can store it in, in another integer which is called as result simple stuff int result equal to i can do something like this sum and then i can say print this result simple stuff see now what will happen 30 has been printed but why this zero has been printed because i have used here return zero okay so that's why zero was printed cool uh, but what if i want to you know i can do something like this as well instead of you know return zero i can use return sum okay now you see only the sum will be printed what is the value of sum a plus b what is the value of a 10 what is the value of b 20 30 is printed that's it what if i do something like this static void void means return nothing so i can't use return statement uh, return statement can't be used for void see it's it's saying cannot return a value from a method with void method basically what method is basically us uh, in java methods are basically functions okay 
okay methods are the uh, name for the functions so it's basically saying that cannot return a re cannot return a value from a method or a function with void result type it's saying that you have used the void so you can't return anything even if i use do something like this return zero it will show me error it's saying you can't use return type why because i have used void so also i can do something like this in sum equal to a plus b and then i have to print something now okay that's it that's it but it's showing me error why since now it's not returning me an any integer value it's void i can i can simply do something like this instead of saying result you know instead of saying result i can say sorry instead of saying i can just call this function here and i can in the next line i can say you know print this function mm. or except wait a second yeah i can i can do something like this yeah that's it Thirty has been written. It simple stuff. I have used a void. Similarly, I can use a float. I can use float as well. Okay, I can use the float as well. But the thing here is, um, let's let's try to run this. Now you see what will happen. Missing return statements. I told you it's missing return statement because you have to return something. So if I do something like this, return sum. Return sum. nothing has been executed nothing why because i have just executed the sum function here since it's returning me in you know a float value so it should be uh, you know be stored in a float result float result equal to sum and then i can say result Thirty point zero. Why point zero? Because float. Float is basically for the decimal numbers. Okay, so this is how your functions basically works. And let me see if if anything is left for the functions. Uh, yeah, one thing is to notice that instead of writing int a equal to ten, you know, int b equal to ten. What if I want to, you know, uh, take the numbers from my own side? That is, I want to take these two numbers as input. So instead of doing this, I can do something like this. I can use int sum. and in this i can use int a comma int b simple so like i have told you in this brackets you can use arguments arguments are what arguments are the values passed to the function what are the value passed to the function int a int b simple now when i try to execute this function if i do something like this it will show me error why it will say that it can't be applied why because it is taking an input values and i have not Input any number. I can do something like twelve comma c. It's happening. A the value phase now twelve, and for the next b I can do something like this b. So now what? Let's see what will happen. Twenty five point zero. Why? Thirteen plus twelve is twenty five point zero. So this int a it comma int b is basically what? It's your arguments. Okay. so you know this is exactly whole about uh, this uh, video uh, you have basically understood about like small small stuff about like what exactly are the functions what exactly is a void what exactly is integer and you know pretty much uh, things about the same uh, the homework question for you guys is to print the multiplication table of a number n okay uh, i would like to see your response on this video and i hope you guys like this video if you guys do make sure you hit the like button subscribe to our channel and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye take care